If you want to learn how to make weathering a figure using nothing more than your brush, this is your video. Welcome to Basil is Dead. Hi everybody, my name is David Basilisk and I'm also the owner of uh, Emotion Creations Miniature Brand. In this YouTube channel, I will bring to you in the next uh, months uh, free content. So if you like it, please share and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And well, today uh, you want to learn how to make weathering a figure using nothing more than the brush and you want to obtain an necron, for example, like this one. Uh, be prepared because this is your video. So let's go. Well, after applying the base coat in the in the miniature and in the weapon as well, with uh, in, in this case with white uh, marking the area where the light will be more powerful, we apply a, a thin layer of a magenta color, and after that, uh, adding a bit of yellow to create a salmon color. We apply the first light in this uh, energy weapon, the hyperface uh, sword or, or whatever it's called. Push with several layers in the same area to obtain the gradient and the focus of the light in the, in the points that we are interested, in this case the, the curve of the weapon. And now with white, I'm creating a final uh, bright of energy in the weapon. The next step is adding black and green. I create a very dark green like or similar to black and with this color I'm creating the shadow or the non-light area of the weapon. Now with this kind of space wolf uh, gray or violet gray or whatever <laughs> you want, which is similar, I'm creating the weathering and the scratches in the surface of the Necron. And uh, you have to focus your scratches in the edges of the miniature because they, they are the natural areas where the scratches will be done or the damage will be represent in a figure. And uh, creating this kind of um, scratches in the, in the edges, you make a more believable effect in the, in the figure. You can also add some uh, uh, cuts in the surface and also small dots in between uh, of the edges. But uh, in these areas, you have to be more um, uh, subtle and not to abuse of these uh, kind of scratches in, in middle areas. Also, you can uh, use a cut brush like this one to create different scratches by uh, hitting the surface with a more or less dry paint in the brush so it will create more subtle uh, damage and details in the surface. You can also add different scratches in the surface with different tones of grays and different dilutions but in this case they have to be uh, just secondary scratches and damage uh, just to add a bit more detail on, the, on your figure. Try always to be uh, subtle and use the correct size of, of damage. Now you have to paint um, the joints. The first layer is a base coat of grey. I'm using exactly the same grey that I have used in the, in the scratches. Cover very well all the surfaces. And now with this smoke from Vallejo, which is some kind of acrylic uh, oil, I, I make a wash over all the surfaces. A first one that covers all the gray parts. And now I will make another one that only focus on the lower parts of these gray parts. You can see how I'm pushing, but uh, with the with the small color, but only in the lower parts of the joints. They will create volumetry and more detail in the figure. Also, you can add uh, rust with some kind of brown, orangey brown. This is up to you, depending on your taste. But the trick is to uh, be once again subtle with this color 
it will um, concentrate in gaps and will fall from the edges. You have to create very fast uh, brush strokes to create this kind of thin line. And also you can add some spots here and there uh, of rust in the figure. But uh, once again, it's something that's up to you, but I recommend you not to ab abuse too much. Well, the next step is painting these energy balls on the, on the figure and also the energy lines in the weapons because of the spheres are more big and less uh, sharp in details uh, we will paint them in white first and the weapon that has its own uh, energy lines will be painted directly using a bright pink uh, pink with white or something similar magenta with white with a high dilution and not too high we paint these lines and you can see that because of this uh, capillarity of the paint, it will uh, go in, in all the lines. And with this same color, we can make a wash over every ball, every uh, sphere. And this color will tint somehow the white uh, underneath and also will uh, fill the gap uh, that is surrounding the, the sphere. Now we jump to the ribs. We follow the same process, fill with white in a first stage. And later we will wash with pink. You can add some detail in the gaps around the balls, surrounding the balls with a more bright pink, but uh, Jumping again to the ribs, the process as you see is the same. At first was with pink, more or less bright pink. Same with the symbol in the chest. Then with some applications more of more brighter pink, adding just white to the magenta, magenta. And a final detail in the ribs with yeah, at the same in the symbol with more bright magenta to define them a bit more and uh, boost the effect of light. And same process with the energy lines of the weapon, adding a bit of more uh, bright magenta to boost the effect of lights, nothing else. This is a detail on the face. This, this is a bit blurry, sorry, but uh, I think it's understandable because it's easy to follow. It has, uh, you only have to add a white coat first, then a first wash some kind of wash, it's not exactly a wash, but a control wash, some kind um, of bright pine, pink or bright magenta. And after that, sorry <laughs> for my hair, uh, add a bit of magenta over this, we'll add some extra color on the surface and we'll boost the uh, effect of light once again. After that, just by pointing a bit more of white to recover the eyes, you has the figure complete. Also, not, don't forget to outline the edges of the weapons. Now we're done to the um, base. Uh, we are adding to a texture past a bit of um, purple ink and black ink to obtain this some kind of violet uh, or dark violet color to the crown. Apply to the base. You don't need to be careful with that. And uh, don't forget to add this texture paste on the base of the legs. So they look like they are uh, dig in the, in the ground. While it's uh, uh, drying, we can boost a bit more the edges, uh, the weathering on the edges, the damage, by applying once again the gray to recover some of the outline or to focus on some areas like the face, which is a main area on, on a figure. After that, with a uh, application of this gray over the previous uh, color mixture or creating some kind of purple, bluish gray, we can make a dry brush over the surface and after that a wash with black. You don't need to uh, wait to dry between colors because applying one uh, over another 
make will make them to mix and create different tonalities which make your figure more interesting. As you want to represent the light in the ground of the weapon, I am applying different kind of uh, purples and pinks, concentrating the more brighter pinks in the near and the closer area of the weapon and the purple tonalities in the farther areas of the ground. You can see that I'm not waiting to dry because I want to mix the colors when they are wet and outlining the edges with pink. We add the final details to the figure. Well, and here finishes the process of the Necron. I hope you like it and you learn a lot with it. And if you uh, paint your own version, remember to tag me in Instagram or your social media. And also to visit the emotioncreation.com website where you can uh, get the, the Brasido, the way of the painter number one free digital magazine. Uh, you only have to uh, register in the, in the web and you can uh, download it. So I recommend you to take a look because uh, in a near future uh, we are going to collaborate with other painters. So I think it's very uh, interesting for you. So thank you for watching and see you in the next videos. Bye bye.